not true for air, but we can approximate for a simple model. Um, and the conservation of mass, if it's non-compressible, that means that the divergence of the velocity field has to be zero. And we also assume that it, the flow is irrotational, so that there are no vert vortices, which means that the rotation is zero. And when, as we've already heard, this means that we can write it in terms of a velocity potential, which then has to be a harmonic function. And since it's an, an harmonic function, we know that we can see it as the real part of a holomorphic function. And this will be useful when we talk about holomorphic uh, conformal mappings. So the next thing is the airfoil. The airfoil is the shape of the cross-section of a wing. And it is the shape of the airfoil which uh, gives the lift to a bird or an airplane. And it looks something like this. Um, to get the lift, we, in a simple model, we impose the so-called the kata condition, which says that the fluid flowing over and below the airfoil meets at the same time at the trailing edge. And this comes from the friction between the flowing fluid and the wing. And from the and from the Bernoulli equation, we see that if they, the air going above travels a longer distance, so it has a higher velocity, and so it exerts less pressure than the fluid going below, and it is this pressure difference that generates the lift, basically. Um, yeah. So what we want to do, we can look at this picture. So what we want to do is to use these conditions for the flow and the Bernoulli equation and the other conditions to solve how the flow works around the airfoil. But since this is a non-trivial geometry, this is kind of a difficult pro problem. And it's not easy to just solve it. Nowadays, we can do it with computers. But before, when they didn't have computing power, it was a hard problem. So we can use conformal mappings to help us. A conformal map is a map that preserves angles in general. And on the complex plane, the, the maps are the holomorphic functions. And uh, if you want to be technical, also the anti-holomorphic functions, but those reverse, uh, those reverse orientation. So we only care about holomorphic functions. And as I said, since we can write all the information about the flow as a holomorphic uh, function, this is useful. So there was a Russian physicist named Zhaukovsky who lived in the uh, 1800s and the beginning of 1900s, who came up with this transformation, which is a, has a simple form. And it maps a circle conformally to an airfoil-like shape. Uh, you have to offset the circle slightly. Uh -huh, come on. You have to offset the circle slightly from the origin, but it's still a simple transformation. And it works something like this. So that circle is mapped to that kind of airfoil-like shape. And by adjusting the lambda parameter there and the offset, you can pretty much get adjust the airfoil shape in whatever way you want, almost. Um, and this also, of course, transforms the flow. If you have the flow potential of the analytic function describing the flow, uh, this conformal map also transforms the flow to go around the airfoil. And it is this fact that helps us um, so you can solve it for the flow around the cylinder, which is a nice, simple, symmetric shape. And uh, you can also, because the Laplace equation is simple and linear, you can solve it for a flow going around the airfoil 
uh, or this uh, rather the flow going around the cylinder and the flow going into the cylinder like that has uh, stagnation points where the velocity field disappears and you can superimpose different solutions and once once you have done this for the cylinder uh, you can just use this rather simple transform and get the correct flow around the airfoil and it looks something like this I, I tried to do this myself in Mathematica but uh, I didn't get anything really nice so this is somebody else's picture um, but as you can imagine solving this thing here is rather much simpler than doing something around this thing and in conclusion, and so this uh, Jaukowski did this in the beginning of the 1900s, bef long before computers. He actually solved and calculated the lift around an airfoil, which is kind of impressive, I think. So in conclusion, uh, this is a, just one example of how conformal mappings can help you reduce problems with interesting complex geometries to simpler ones. And I find that kind of cool. And I guess that's it. And it preserves, since the conformal map is angle preserving, it preserves all the, I mean, it maps a solution to, to a solution, obviously. Yes? Has this been tested experimentally? Like, is it from, from certain spherical details? Or, or, uh, yeah, I didn't include, uh, let's see. I have some references. And in the first one there, they compared the results with both experiments and with some other more direct numerical methods and um, it works pretty well yeah. not as well as when you do what's called uh, a thin airfoil calculation method something like that it's not quite as good but it's pretty good so uh, Bernson tries that we can walk for a specific form of uh, well of a wheel just given by a noisy formula Yes. Um, and how is it uh, well, generalized to a general uh, form of a wind? Uh, you, you, do people do it numerically or what? Or just other analytic methods? Good question. I don't. I don't really know. I think you do it numerically. I, I mean, um, you have this basically. Th that is the parameter you have, and you also have the offset how you take the circle and you move it a little bit and depending on how you move it it transforms into a slightly different uh, wing form a airfoil shape and the lambda parameter also controls like the the width of the so the offset controls how the how the curvature of the thing goes and the lambda parameter is some kind of width of the central so you can kind of have some you try to fit them as well as you can and you can't get a perfect with fit for all shapes but you can get kind of good sh uh, fits too many of them. Uh, well as a, I mean this could be I mean it mm, I had a picture Something like this. There are different kinds, but something like this. Number nine. There. Okay. 
Yes. Yeah, there's a cusp at A. That's right. And it comes, I mean, that's from the one of the set, I guess. Uh, so, uh, uh, it's not a branch point, is it? Yeah, it, it, it doesn't seem to behave quite correct at A, that's right. Um, there is this thing that when you impose this kutta condition, the, the trailing edge and this point becomes a point where the, where the velocity field has to vanish. So I guess that's what saves you when you transform the flow. I think you don't have any trouble at that point because the velocity field at th that point has to be zero. So it doesn't matter that. Yeah. Yeah. That 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 is strange, but I have tried it. Yeah. Uh, so. <laughs> I think th it's actually a cusp. I think it actually. I think it actually is a. I don't know. I Good with this.